There you go, a quick look at the matches for tonight. Louise Bates, she had her uh, successful debut, now taking on Nayla Jordan for seemingly no reason. But that's because I didn't expect to do a show. I just got really bored. So we're going to start the show. Oh, sorry. The move set for Matt is the one on the very last version that you uploaded, or at least the last one that you gave me. So, everything should be like the most current that I that it should be. I should say. See, because it's this version of them, which, as far as I could tell, those that's the most. Current. Make sure entrance is on for everything. Don't want there to not be entrances. All right. First match. Now, this isn't much of a story-driven match. This is just a prove-yourself kind of match. As far as I know of, Louise Bates won't be on 2K20 for the foreseeable future until at least Christmas. So this could be her, her last match. For the time being, uh, she, over the weekend, participated in a big matchup for the Ring the Bell Women's Championship. She was not successful in that matchup, but Amber Baker retaining in that matchup. She's looking to face Ashley Rain, I believe, next. I've already forgotten the order of the matches. That's how you know I'm a professional. And welcome to anyone who's watching this that is a first-time viewer. Uh, if you haven't already hit the follow button, please do and stick around because possibly after this stream, I'll just be streaming a bunch of random shit too. Maybe even Friday the 13th. I don't know. All I know is I'll be in a party doing a bunch of random shit. Oh shit. Didn't realize it loaded. Uh, I still haven't even played the story for Red Dead. I don't know if there's anyone actually interested in watching me play it, so I don't really want to. But just just to clarify, this is what the stage is supposed to look like on 2K20. It's one big screen, I know, but I tr I tried to make it look different. And when the screen doesn't change to the Titantron, it's just it's the logos, so it looks normal. But Louise Bates, like I said, she was successful in her debut. I believe she debuted at Last Stand. Uh, she took on, if I remember correctly, Ashley Rain. Don't quote me on that. Here, I'll, while I'm sitting here, while the entrances are going, I will fact check myself. Because that's what I'm supposed to do, is fact check myself. Okay, so let's see.
I know Cass, I know she had a, a match. I just don't know when. Because apparently I didn't put it on any of the card listings. But, yeah, she had a match. She was successful. Now Nayla Jordan, not as successful in her run so far. Maybe she can knock out the momentum of Louise Bates. And her Though the momentum From Chicago, really doesn't matter much Illinois. at this point. Beautiful. The title matches Jordan. are really what's going to count towards everything here. Now, while we're here talking about things that matter, let's talk about our sponsor here, 93 Degree Apparel. You can get all the merch and all the stuff from them. As well as our partner, great partner, Ring the Bell Wrestling. Go check out Endgame. I think it's I believe it's on YouTube now. Same as their Twitch, Ring the Bell Wrestling. So I'd suggest watching that. Very good show. A nice lockup, center of the ring side headlock from Louise. Now with an over the head hammer lock, sweeping the leg. Over the weekend, I believe it was on Sunday or Sat Saturday or Sunday, maybe even Monday. Uh, we had a little bit of a live event, which you could still watch on Mixer, which I do not suggest. Um, Johnny Respawn became the Intercontinental Champion, taking it off Jaquan Shea. Now, Shea could not make it to the to the arena here, so we had to swap out his opponent. His opponent is Elijah Riley, the last opponent. Wait, did I say Elijah Riley? It wasn't Elijah Riley. Sorry. Big oof. It's Dan Masters and Scott Osborne for the IC title. Elijah Riley is going for the Cruiserweight title. Sorry. But... That match should be good as Scott Osborne looking to bring at least one more piece of gold to the Prestige and the rest of the Prestige members looking to keep the gold around their waist. Fighting on the outside. for the pin. Not even a one count. Louise is able to kick out. What is this? Big Urka Rana. Rana. What the fuck? Oh, big blockbuster. I, uh, I'm kind of hoping Naylor gets this win. It'll, it could be a game changer for her as she's a uh, if I remember, and I'm trying my hardest to remember, I don't think she has won a single match under the VPW banner. So let's hope she can get that win. But let's also hope it's a convincing one as she completely whiffs the super kick, but Louise not doing anything whatsoever to get her momentum back. Getting dropped into the corner. Now Nayla taunting her a bit. Bronco Buster in the corner. Not the fingies, not the fingies. Stomping on the fingers of Louise Bates. Reversal by Louise. Sends her into the corner. Reversal by Nayla knocking her in the face. Now sends her to the opposite corner. Irish whip to the other side. Now double feet to the chest. Drop kick sh shooting her into the corner. One, two. I was expecting it to be a double knee, not the shotgun drop kick. So I uh, preemptively called it the double. Irish whip into the corner again. Reversal by Louise this time. I 
Bishop into the corner. Another reversal. These two are spending a lot of time in the corner, not very much in the middle of the ring. Speaking of corners, Nayla Jordan going to the top. What is she thinking? She's turning around. Big moonsault, hitting her flat in the stomach. One, two, two count only. Now what is she gonna do? She hit the moonsault. Is she going for a second one? Now she's waking her up. What is she gonna be hitting here? Missing, oh! I think she broke her leg there. She may have broken her leg there. And Louise, though she's going after the wrong leg, she's got the right strategy. The first thing she did once she missed that is she went after the leg. It was the wrong leg, but still the leg nonetheless. Louise with a big frog splash, going for the pin, hooking the leg. One, two. I don't know how she's still kicking out of stuff. I mean, like, it's, it's already agreed upon that she definitely at least sprained her ankle. I mean, she looks like she's limping as she's walking there. It's, yeah, she had to kind of jump across the ring as she gets hit with a cutter. Taking her out. Go for the pin. One, two, a kick out at two. You're already badly damaged. Just quit kicking out. Don't take any further damage in this matchup. Just let it be. She stumbles into the corner. That is a good sign of the damage done. She tried to get one big hit there as she's, oh! She's back up to her feet at the same time. But it was not a good idea what a, <laughs> whatsoever. Now Louise going to the top again. Frog splash from the top, knees up. Big X Factor. She's doing whatever she can. She's being very risky though with that possibly injured leg. Taking a very high risk here is not a good choice, but she hits it somehow. One, two, three. Nayla Jordan picking up the victory with a possibly sprained ankle. Look at this moonsault, the form of it. Frog splash there by Louise. Look at that springboard into the cutter. There's that frog splash on the knees there, and we don't get to Here see the final winner, moonsault, but nonetheless, Jordan. she's stepping around like she's maybe possibly hurt, but she's not showing too much signs of damage. Though she could very well still be injured after missing that, uh, I believe, her karana that ended up possibly spraining her ankle. But nonetheless, let's get to our next matchup here, which is... Ashley Rain versus Amber Baker for the VPW Women's Championship. Now, these two have a little bit of history, I believe. Uh, Amber and Ashley, I, if I remember correctly, they faced each other at least once or twice in the buildup to Amber getting this Women's Championship. And not only that, but if memory serves me correct, uh... Amber had to defeat Ashley and a few other women to get to this spot multiple times, actually. But let's talk about how Ashley Rain. I don't know if she's actually going to have the title with her because it's going to be, a, it's probably an extremely dangerous thing to walk around with the Open Challenge Championship around your waist all day. But she is the current Open Challenge Champion as she beat Amber on the last show that we did on Mixer. Uh, she beat her backstage for the title, for one. And two, uh, she's not only the current champion, but she's a five-time Open Challenge champion and a one-time women's champion. So she has 
quite the history and championship wins. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Women's World Championship. And welcome to the chat. Well, that looks actually pretty cool. Wow. That actually looks really cool. Wow. Ashley Rain making her way to the ring. Not holding the title. Uh, like I said, a wise decision on her part. Not having that title with her pretty much secures the fact that she can't lose it. So if I guess it's going to be a, a new unspoken rule, I guess. If you don't have the title with you during your match, you can't lose it if you lose the match. But Ashley Rain looking to become a two-time women's champion. I believe the first ever, possibly. I think the only other possible person to do that would be Madison Miles. And I'm not too sure if she actually won the women's title twice. Can't remember. I know she won the women's intercontinental championship twice, but not too sure about the regular title. But Amber Baker, the ace of the skies, the angel of the skies, I should actually say. Uh, look at the size of her shoulders there. Look at the strength, able to hold a title, an entire foot above her shoulder. Now, if Amber wins this, she will continue her reign into 2K20 because I promise, guys, this is the last show on 2K19, at least for now. Until uh, I get bored again, obviously. But Amber uh, needs to retain the title here to keep that uh, to keep that momentum going into the next season, for one. And two, just because... Being the women's champion in VPW is one of the most prestigious things ever considering how few women's champions we've actually ever had under our reign. And the fact that like the former champion held the title for, I believe, almost a year. Not, e not almost a year, sorry. It, a good it chunk of time, I should say. From Orlando, Florida. Because I can't ever remember the actual time frame of the title reigns. But I just know that she held the title for a very, very long time. Introducing the champion from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. She is the women's world champion, Ace Amber Baker. Amber raising that title high. Or as high as she can. But Ashley Rain looking to make Amber call her daddy here tonight. Uh, sorry, I had to say it. It's her thing now. Will Amber call her daddy? Or will Amber knock her out? The knee to the face and kicking her in the leg there as she was falling. Amber's taking her time here. I don't think she sees uh, Ashley as a bit of a problem, but, uh, you know, what she lacks in size, she uh, she definitely makes up for in fight, or might, if you will. Oh, God, all the puns. I'm so sorry. Clothesline sends her over the top. So, like I said in the last match when we were talking about the card in general, Amber is fresh off uh, multiple title defenses, for one, uh, and multiple title matches. Uh, and tonight is her first, not her first defense. I don't think it's her first defense. But it's her second defense of the women's championship. Uh, she faced off with... Uh, Cassidy Ray at last stand. But it, it was a decent match as well. Uh, 
Amber sends her to the ring with the pin. One count only. Irish whip into the corner. Oof. No wonder she got kicked in the face there. She just whiffed that forearm. The small, the small stature of Ashley Rain is really coming to bite her in the ass here on this match. Big boot to the face. Seems uh, she's only coming up short here tonight. Big inverted power bomb. Ashley Rain rolling to the outside, trying to catch her breath just a little bit. Maybe what Ashley needs to do in this match is go high risk. It seemed to have worked out for her in the. Oh my God! I was about to say going high risk helped her out in her first title win in DPW, but she just tried to escape Amber Baker, and it did not go well for her there. Count of five, kick to the head. Amber sending her back into the ring, not wanting to win via count out. At least not yet. Amber reverses with the close on. Now taking just a moment to taunt the fact that she's able to beat Ashley Rain this well. Goes for the pin. One. Ashley has all of this energy still left in her, though. Misses the drop kick. Oh, sliced bread. There's a, there's a name for that. I don't have my book with me. Shit. One. Two. There's, there's the book. I found it. Yeah, sunny side down. Thank you. I have... Like, I have a lot of the people's moves listed. Uh, no, that's not the sunny side down. That is actually over the rainbow. Sunny side down is a kill switch. But that one was the rainbow salt. Two. Now she's waking her up. Taking her back down to the mat, though. She's kind of confused on her intentions. Big clothesline. The second one now. Third one. Now she's in the corner. Ashley needs to go and hit the over the rainbow out of the corner. That's what she plans on doing, and that's what she does. Hits it. Not going to the top yet. No, going for the pin. Over the rainbow. One, two. Oh. It looked like it was over there for Amber. Not going to the top, not looking for the for that big one. She's going for the sunny side down. She hits it. Goes for the pin. Pulls her away from the ropes. One, two, three. Here is your winner. And the new BPW women's champion. Ashley Rain. Two time. Two time. I gotta write that down. Where's my pen? There's my pen. Congratulations to Ashley Rain. Uh, it was a it was a good match. It was a very good match. I will say that. But there you see it, the sunny side down. Then take Amber Baker out of the match. Very, very good showing from both women. Congratulations to Ashley Rain. Here is your winner and new women's world champion, Ashley Ray. What the, f oh, what the fuck has happened? Oh. I thought someone was about to attack her or something because the lights went out. I'm like, what? Congratulations. Now let's get on with the show just a little bit long, a little bit more here. 
Intercontinental Championship on the line as Scott Osborne, Dan Masters, and Johnny Respawn go head to head to head. Johnny Respawn with his first title defense. It's the biggest title defense it could be. A triple threat match right off the bat. He won this title on a house show. Dude, okay. So, yeah, you just you just won it. But not only did you just win the Intercontinental Championship, but Ashley just won the women's title. Scott Osborne, though, looking to make his way to the ring. He's got to get the singles title for himself because the other two members of Prestige have the tag titles. He needs to win singles gold. Now, he's had he had an opportunity at the world title in a sort of, I should say. Uh, if he would have beaten Jacob Wells the week after Wells won the title, he would have gotten the title shot. But Scott was unsuccessful in that title number one contender match. So here we have this match where he's going for the Intercontinental title. Now, just a stone uh, like he says in the chat. 76, no, 70, yeah, 76 day reign. And he's having a triple threat as his rematch. Now, he could have easily had a one-on-one -on -one match for the Intercontinental title because he still has an Intercontinental title rematch due to relinquishing it willingly to be the world champ. So he has that rematch if he is not able to win tonight. Dan Masters uh, seems to be a little bit hyped about his first singles title match. All three of these men participated in the King of the World Tournament. Obviously, none of them won. But uh, Dan Masters' former tag team partner, Morgan Wolf, did win that, and he's going to be in the main event here tonight against Justice Stone and Jacob Wells for the world title. And like I said earlier, this is the arena you can expect to see. Maybe upgraded graphics because the arena models were actually updated. But for 2K20, when those shows actually start being a thing, this is the arena you're going to be seeing. Johnny Respawn, this is his first title in and VPW. Introducing the champion from Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 175 pounds. He is the Intercontinental Champion, Johnny. Johnny what, JoJo? He has a second name, dude. No. Nah. We just pulled a WWE on him. We're not calling him Johnny Respawn anymore. He's just Johnny. Will he uh, retain his title here? That's the big question. Yeah, yeah, no more Respawn. We can't, we can't have him coming back. You know what I mean?
Johnny Respawn looking very, very good with that title, to be honest with you. I'm not going to lie. He looks really good with the Intercontinental title. Kind of wish he would have come out with it around his waist, though. But that's just me nitpicking. Here we go, we got Powerhouse, Technician, High Flyer. That's a very nice mix of people right there, to be honest with you. Dan Masters doesn't seem to give a shit about what the match is, though. He's staying off to the side. Get hit with a Hurricanrana for just trying to sit out the match, though. Respawn getting caught by Scott with a big hip toss there. Getting caught up in the ropes in the process of it. Scott is cleaning house. Jesus Christ, Scott. What is wrong with you, dude? The two, the two little men taking a moment to go after Scott here. Oh, Johnny uh, not wanting the match to go in anyone else's favor. Kicking the ref in the leg. Kind of like a douchebag, but whatever. Big suplex by Dan Masters. Going for the German suplex, but gets reversed into an arm drag. Masters knocks him into the ropes. Repeated strikes to the chest and head. Respawn, oh, punch to the nose. Dan Masters is knocking them both, <laughs> knocking them both loopy. Holy shit, dude. Scott, in, he's just not really sure what's going on anymore. He's kind of staying back waiting to pick his moment a big complete shot by Johnny Respawn big forearm now Dan and Scott rolled to the outside Scott though stays on the apron oh, respawn. oh punching him in the chest oh no 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 high risk maneuvers never go in your guys' favor just don't do it do not do it oh Harker run on the floor Respawn sets his eyes on Dan Masters, but Dan throws him to the floor. Now Masters is looking to damage the champ just a little bit. Bashing his skull off the apron. It's the hardest part of the ring, but he set his eyes on Scott Osborne now. The quick strike to the stomach using the feet oh bashing his head off the apron as well but oh that was not a good shot as Scott looks to be busted wide open can we make it back in the ring please thank you Dan sending respawn back in the ring now he's attacking the leg trying to damage the limbs not allowing him to get up on the top rope as with ease. Scott misses the clothesline. Dan sends him on the middle rope. Uh, what, is, what is he doing here? Oh, just pulling his arm. Decapitator on the rope. Changing his targeting there for a second. Execution. Dan goes for the pin. A very clear rope break, too. Very clear rope break, but the ref does not care. This one goes for the follow up, following into that forearm, but not able to get it. Scott Osborne pissed off with a chair, attacking both men with the chair there. Oh my God! Scott is using his brain here by using that chair. It's a triple threat. There is no rules in this triple threat match. He should have done that a long time ago. Scott is absolutely done with their shit right now. What is he doing? Snake eyes on the top rope. 
Now he's taking a second to go after Johnny Respawn here too. Knee to the face. Respawn rolling out of the ring. Osborne grabbing Dan Masters by the arm, dragging him over that chair. Next snap. Now attacking the leg. Scott is a master of grapples here. He's keeping on each limb as he can. Did a lot of damage with the chair, not to mention. Respawn in the ring. Gets a straight jab to the face. Elbow to the back of the head, sort of. Kick to the gut. Respawn grabs him. What is he going to do here? Sets him on the ropes. What is he thinking? Nothing as Scott pushes him off. Kick to the gut. Reverses the chop. Sends him over the rope. No, Hurricanrana kind of on the chair. Respawn calling for Masters to do something. And he does. Jesus Christ. He taunted Dan, and Dan was ready for the for the punches there. Why'd you turn him around if you were just gonna turn him back around? Are you I was about to say, are you about to turn him around again? But what does he Oh trio whoa? Oh, choking respawn with his boot there. Scott is back up to his feet, getting in the ring. Attacking Johnny. Now attacking Dan, but Dan fights back yet again. Scott not allowing him to grapple. Big shoulder block. Now refocuses on Johnny, goes for the pin. One, two. I don't know, dude. This is a really good. Oh, Judas effect! Lifting him back up, he's got to hit the big, big move, but Johnny able to get away from him. Enzo Gurry knocking him to the floor. Respawn going to the outside. Not allowing Scott a moment to breathe. Osborne effect, sorry. Oh, oh, gee. <laughs> Into the stairs. Uh, Scotty, what are you doing, buddy? Um, Scott is retreating to the crowd here to get away from the this fight. Uh, he's keeping himself hidden just a little bit. Oh, he's. Oh wait, he realized what's happening. He he woke up from his little his little slumber, but respawn able to reverse the spear. Otherwise. Gets caught with the forearm. What is Respawn gonna do? Trying to drag him out of the chair, but goes for the pin. Only a one count. Not much was really expected there. Drop kick to the back of the head. Now Dan Masters, big boot, dropping him onto the chair there. What is he thinking? Big forearm strike, another clothesline. Big bulldog. Now going after Respawn as Scott rolls out of the way. Respawn goes for the kick. Oh, Cloverleaf. Will Johnny Respawn tap? The Cloverleaf is locked in. No, he gets out of it. Drop kick, that was a nice reversal. Wow. Scott Osborne, jump block onto Respawn. Wait a minute. They, they've noticed each other. Goes for a punch to the face. Oh, bang a ring. Going to drag him away from the rope so there's no chance of a rope break. Goes for the pin. One, two, oh. Almost a three. Scott able to kick out. 
Oh, Scott, torture rack bomb. Oh, somewhat on the chair. Goes for the pen, Johnny's distracted. One, two, three, oh! Oh, the ref is taken out. Johnny is trying to roll over the ref, but not able to roll over the ref. Code breaker. Scott trying to roll out over the ref, but not able to roll past him. The ref is uh, seemingly saving the, the participants in this match from losing. Knee to the face. Would have been the perfect pin. It would have. At least for Scott. I mean, not, not so much for Johnny. Now, Scott realizing he needs to get this over with as quickly as possible. Dragging Johnny to the ropes. Goes for the pin. The ref's not paying attention. Ropes. He's got his feet on the ropes. Two. Only a two count. Respawn sent into the corner. Oh, elbow to the face. Michinoku driver. He's going after his head, but Scott, big shoulder block there. Now Respawn arm drags him away from him. What is he going to do here? He's picking him up. Sets him on the, oh, no, throws him over the ropes. Sorry. Forearm to the face. Dan Masters distracted by Scott Osborne. Now he's back in the ring. Up, uh, okay. Uh, chop to the back. Respawn, forearm to the face. Spear. Very much in the ropes. One, two, three. Dan Masters. Picking up the victory and the Intercontinental Championship after hitting a massive spear in the corner. There's that Osborne effect where I thought it was almost it. Some of these moments early on should have been it, like that one. Johnny Respawn was not paying attention, but that one second there is what cost him the match. Congratulations, Dan Masters, on the first ever Intercontinental Championship victory here tonight. Dan Masters. He's flipping the fuck out. On to our next matchup. So far, the Prestige have not left with any like any gold to their name except for the tag titles obviously around their waist already but will the re the currently reuniting will and hope be able to dethrone prestige let's see if they have what it takes or if they still have what it takes because these two are former tag champs in their own right let's see if they can do it again Oi, oi, oi. Hello. Hello, hello. Oi, 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 oi. Oi, oi. Oof. It's been like 45 minutes, my dude. No, he doesn't. He looks like he's very happy to be there. I mean, he should be happy to be here. I mean, he's been, he's lost every single match. That Any opportunity he's gotten to prove himself as a worthy contender, he loses. He lost the Cruiserweight title match that he had a few days ago. He loses every single time. Will he finally be able to win a title match with Byron by his side yet again? I mean, they didn't even successfully defend the tag titles when they were champs. So what? who's to say they're even going to win here tonight? 
I'd like to believe they they have a chance of winning, but the Prestige are, as a group, the Prestige are a well-oiled machine. Now, when they're separated, not so much as we saw last match. But here we go. Brandon Alexander's getting the title shot. A tag title shot with Byron on his side. Byron no longer our Cruiserweight Champion. Byron with brown eyes is rare. What? Is this like a different version of Byron that I don't know about? Byron, though, two-time cruiserweight champion. Yes, at least you did. But two-time cruiserweight champion, one-time tag team champion here in VPW. Looking to become a two-time with his tag partner, Brandon Alexander. Now, a more obvious choice for a tag partner for Byron here in this matchup would have been Benny Banks, but uh, Benny could not make it to the arena as he was uh, one of the few wrestlers still not able to make it back from the overseas trip. Ah, oh, I see. Justice Stone uh, was able to make a charter here to, uh, here to the States to make it to the show. But like I said, Benny Banks was not a part of the group that made it back to the States. So that's why uh, Brandon Alexander and and Byron were reunited yet again for this tag team. Brandon Alexander, though, uh, like like was it was stated already, you know he went to the finals of the King of the World tournament and lost to Morgan Wolf. This is his 85th chance to say the least. Will he finally be able to make this opportunity count? Now, every time I say this big hoorah chant thing for him, where I'm like, yes, will he ever be able to make this you know, work? He usually loses. So I'm gonna say it right now, I, he's probably gonna lose. But will the match be great? That's a completely different story. Because Brandon Alexander, at least in VPW, has been known to pump out five-star classics with no matter who he's in the ring with. Prestige taking their time as they come to the ring here. Philip and Matt. <clears throat> Sorry. Philip and Matt here. They won the tag titles at last stand in a tag team triple threat match between Bulletproof, British Invasion, and themselves. Took the spot of the tag team who, sh who shall not be named in that matchup as one of the members had a leg injury. There we see the tag team titles on display. It's kind of a weird thing. I I have a love-hate relationship with that design that I made for the tag titles. I, I like it, but I don't like it at the same time. At a combined weight of 409 pounds, Byron, the legend, X, and Brandon, Will and Hope back for tonight. Will they be staying that way? Brandon Alexander and their opponents. A 
at a combined weight of 458 pounds. They are the tag team Philip Sheffield and Matt Bailey. There you see it, the ref lifting those prestigious titles, pun intended. Bell rings. Byron immediately with the flatliner. Brandon's cheering on his tag partner here. Keeping the damage on the arm tier. Got to set him up for that submission later on in the match that we know he's he likes to do. Tagging out to Brandon. Maybe Brandon can finally show that he has what it takes to win a match up here. And he's immediately spotted down like a fly. But he's fighting back. That's all that matters. It's the big calf kick. Though he is fighting back, the fight might not be enough as Philip sends him into the corner. This is enemy territory. This is bad news for Brandon. Oh no, Cloverleaf. Oh, stomping on the knee there. Looking to stomp out the hope of Brandon Alexander here. Dragging him away though. Smart thing from Brandon. Keep him in your corner, cut off the ring. You wouldn't usually see some tactics like that from Brandon, but he's desperate for this win. And he's gonna do it at any possible cost. Byron, for some reason, trying to take him over the barricade, but not having it is Matt. Matt with these awesome strikes here. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, suplex into the stairs. Byron sent back in the ring. Thought for a second he was about to punch Brandon in the face as he got up in his face there, but he didn't do it. Byron sends him into the corner. What is this? Keeping the ring cut off as he hits the guillotine on the rope. Brandon dropping it from the apron just in case. Oh, kick to the face, I think that was. Oh, boot to the gut. Matt keeping a hold of the arm there. Hammerlock, Northern Lights. Now, Matt showing a little bit of that, the same tag team, uh, you know, skill. Keeping him in his corner and making sure he's not going to have a chance of crawling away as he's getting out of the ring. Oh, Byron, though, getting the upper hand, setting him on the shoulders, hanging him up on the top rope. Not even a one count. with whatever the fuck this is. A Venus flytrap, I guess, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I forget what it's actually called. I think it's an octopus stretch or something. Whatever. Philip now sent him in the corner. Tag made. Again, the Cloverleaf, but this time onto Byron. Now, they're both getting damage to the legs done. Prestige firmly in control here. Byron trying to make the tag, but Philip, that's not Philip, is it? That's Matt. I'm sorry, Matt now. Dr. Bomb. One. Not even a two count, but Byron is still in danger. Byron is starting to stir. 
a punch to the face. Now up on the shoulders. Oh, rolling fireman carry. Byron crawling away, trying to get to his corner. He tried desperately to get to the corner, but Matt able to cut him off just in time. Matt keeping him grounded and keeping him away from that, that corner, not allowing him to get to the tag at all. Now dragging him towards the center as he's going for a submission here. Cloverleaf, no, inverted figure four. Brandon not coming in to save his partner. If, if Byron taps out, this is Brandon's fault. No, he lets off the submission. He doesn't want to end it off of that. He's going to go for a pin. A dirty one, but Brandon immediately in for that one. Seeing as, oh, Philip just knocked out both his partner and Brandon. But Matt up to his feet, not acknowledging it. Byron, though, flip out of it. Enzo Curry. Misses the kick to the gut, but he gets the kick to the, gets it now. Backstabber. Waking him up, he's feeling a little bit of energy now. Oh, kick to the face. Stopping any momentum, any hope he had there. Into the corner. Brandon still on the floor. Tag is made. Again, attacking that leg. Oh my God, the tag team maneuver here. Not only did they attack the leg, but now Matt, after tagging out, getting a couple of extra big moves in there with those backbreakers. Trying to get out of the ring. I was about to say, may have just stopped Byron from uh, staying in the ring, but no, Philip able to cut him off as well. Dr. Bomb yet again, not going for the pin this time. Goes to the corner, looking to hit that running Enziguri. And he hits it, kicking the head off of Byron's shoulders. But he's not going for the pin immediately. Takes him second to taunt. Oh, stomping on the arm. Now he's waking him up, going for the finisher. Byron needs to reverse or get out of the submission. Brandon needs to get in there to break it, but he's he's not he's not getting in there to break the submission. Byron able to get out of it otherwise. Oh, Byron puts him up on his shoulders though. Face buster. Byron with an arm breaker of his own. The crowd not too happy here tonight. I don't know why the crowd's booing Byron. That's an, a very unusual thing here. I'm actually really surprised they're booing Byron. This is weird. The crowd usually loves Byron, but not tonight. Bray Buster on the knee. Not going for the pin. Looking to find a, a position for something else here, but he's not really too sure about it. Sends him into his corner, possibly looking for the tag finish. Oh, loads of strikes into Gurry, double foot stomp. Goes for the pin, but Matt able to break it up almost immediately, getting out of the ring after reversing that, their move. Now, Brandon getting a little bit of his heat back as he hits the knee off the mat there. Sends him into the corner. Oh, he's looking to go coast to coast. Matt knocked off the apron. Coast to coast, he hits it. Swinging across the ring. Goes for the pin. 
One, two. Only a two count. Matt not trying to break up that one, knowing that Phillip had it. Brandon goes for an Irish whip, but it backfires. He gets sent into the enemy territory. Again with this strike to the, the leg here, this time on to Brandon instead. Now the same, the same strategy being used again, this time on Brandon. You'd think after the being on the other side of the ring, seeing it happen, he would have been able to scout this maneuver and have it done and figured out. But the attack on the leg catches him off guard as he was sitting there taking the move. Brandon reverses European uppercut. What is this? Up he goes, Gordbuster, GTS. Dragging him away from the ropes. Goes for the pin. Byron not coming in to save the partner. One, two. Neither, neither tag partner came in to stop or help the pin. Byron patiently awaiting this maneuver here. But Matt not allowing it. Matt keeping Brandon in a de defensive position. You know. Brandon up to his feet. Opposite corner that he should be going to. Brandon reverses. Brandon sends him into the end the will and hope corner. Oh, here we go. Super kicks. Oh, Byron not able to stop the tag. Phillips in. Reversal by Byron. Into the corner. This is the time where they need to hit the biggest moves they could possibly hit. He's completely alone in there. One, two. Philip is completely al alone in this fight. They need to do as much damage as possible, but Byron slowing it down. Byron had the straight jacket locked in, but gets reversed. Philip. Unwisely taunting in front of Byron's face. Reversals nonetheless. Clothesline. Another one. Big calf kick. Byron on the mat. Tries to get to the tag, but not able to. Arm breaker by Byron. Again, these arm attacks. And now kicking him in the gut. Forearm to the face. I believe Philip is still in there alone, but Matt seems to be getting up to his feet. Leg sweep. Dragon sweep, sorry. Philip sends him into his own corner. That's an interesting, interesting strategy there. I can't I think I said interesting, but I meant interesting. I kept saying the wrong one, I think. Sorry. Philip going to set him on the top rope. Hanging him out to dry. Now waking him up. Byron needs to reverse. Not reversing. Submission locked in, but Byron immediately out of the submission hold. Not trying to get caught with it. Oh wait, Byron just, Brandon just got hit with a suplex. He just took one for the team. Philip realizing the gravity of the situation. Misses the grapple. It cost him. Never mind. Oh, it's, it still might have cost him. Byron sends him into the corner. Reversal. Into the other corner. Oh. Big uppercut. Maybe a back elbow to the back of the Shoulder, like into the shoulders. Byron in a dangerous position with this Enziguri coming straight for his head. Oh, kick to the face, busting him open. Not going for the pin. He lifts him up to his feet. Byron fighting him off, though. Oh, Byron not able to get the move there, but sent to the outside. A very 
guess you could say rookie mis a very much a rookie mistake there, sending him to the outside when he had him right where he needed him. Three. Matt looking to pick up the scraps. And that's exactly what he seems to be doing already. Byron fighting back just with anything here, but not enough as Matt is beating the ever-living shit out of him. Oh no, a, possibly a brain buster on the floor. Count of five. And a six here, Matt sends him back in the ring. Matt needs to get him before he tags, but Brandon tagging him, get the hot tag. Okay. Oh, big spine buster. Goes for the pin on Brandon Alexander. One, two, kick out at two. Brandon, knee to the face. Brandon, almost caught with it, gets the arm breaker. Brandon, sunset flip, power bomb. Waiting for this moment here. He's trying to, he's trying to save some energy. Oh, catching him with a flapjack. He went for the clothesline, gets caught with a flapjack on the ropes. Now Brandon's going to the top. Phoenix Flash, no, inverted Phoenix Flash goes for the, not even go for the pin. Not going for the pin just yet. Now he goes for the pin. One, two, not able to get to the pin on time. Byron, not able to get to the pin on time. Now going after Phillip. Phillip focused on Byron. Brandon keeping his eyes on the prize with Matt here. So close to victory. Matt, uppercut. Tiger Bob! Oh, now he's got him in this half camel clutch. Brandon getting out of it though. This is the Enziguri again. Enziguri finally hits it. He's feeling the energy. Lifts him up. What is he gonna do? Big forearm. Leg drop and a drop kick. Byron back up on the apron. This is the moment. No, possum. Oh, taking out the ref in the process. The ref is out, but he's still going for the submission. There's, there's. He can't win the match. The ref is out. Brandon, is, Brandon can tap right now, and the ref wouldn't be able to see it. Oh my God, the excruciating pain he must be in right there. Oh my God, now he's going for it again. He's got it locked in again, but this time a rope break stopping him. Brandon able to get himself out of the submission this time. Brandon sends him to the corner. Maybe thinking for the coast to coast yet again. No, sends him to the out, into the middle of the ring. Big moonsault. Brandon sends him back into the corner yet again. Look at the blood on the hand of Matt, ba Matt Bailey there after the punches on Byron earlier on. Byron needs to get out of the way so his partner can hit this coast to coast. He's got to swing right into it. He hits it. Go for the pin, Brandon. Go for, no, he's not going for the pin. Extra damage, looking to hit it. Goes for the Gord Buster GTS, he hits it. Go for the pin. Byron, get in there, stop the breakup. Win the match. Three, Brandon Alexander and Byron x win winning the match. Holy shit. 
what? That was an, that was an amazing tag team matchup. What a contest. And Brandon Alexander, for the first time ever, actually winning the big one. Holy shit. Not only, did, not only did he win a big match, but he was the one who got the pin. For the first time ever, Brandon Alexander gets the pin in a big matchup. Congratulations to Will and Hope, everybody. Byron and Brandon, two-time tag team champions. Wow. All right. While this match is loading, I have to go to the bathroom, but I'm also going to run an ad while I'm in the bathroom. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Let's get this. Let's get the rest of the show on the road here, as we have cruiserweight title on the line. Wow. The following contest that was, is that was great. For one fall. That was great. And it's for the cruiserweight championship. comes Elijah Riley. This is not his first time having a Cruiserweight title match, but his first time in a while as he was going for the Intercontinental and the World title for a good chunk of time there. Now this time he's facing Dylan Vincent, who has come, is fresh off of not only beating Brandon Alexander, who you know just won the tag titles, but he beat Dustin Weaver in the same night that he beat Brandon Alexander. Elijah Riley, former Money in the Bank winner. Unsuccessfully cashed in on Justice Stone, who will be getting his rematch clause here tonight. Also, 
big uh, congratulations goes to, goes out to Elijah Riley, winning the Triple Crown Championship on Ring the Bell Wrestling at Endgame. Sorry for the spoiler if you hadn't watched it yet, but big big major news for him. Dylan Vincent, a very dominant cruiserweight champion so far. Like I said, able to defeat two of our major stars in one night. So let's see if he can continue that momentum into this matchup. Or will Elijah Riley be able to defeat him and become a cruiserweight champion in his own right? Oh shit, now I, f I almost forgot. I got to write down that Brandon's a two-time cruiserweight, well not cruiserweight, two-time uh, tag champ now. Dark ass tattoo too. There we go. Two time tag champ, Brandon Alexander. That's nice. Dylan Vincent. Let's I'm really hoping that he's successful here. But at the same time, I haven't heard from him since he won the title, so I don't know if he's even gonna be on two K twenty. So as much as I hope he continues his reign of dominance, I almost hope he loses because I haven't heard from him since he won the title. From Knoxville, Tennessee, weighing in at 182 pounds, Showtime, Elijah Riley. Introducing the champion from San Diego, California, Weighing in at 205 pounds, he is the Cruiserweight Champion, Dylan Vincent. I mean, it basically is. That was a... F I'm... Okay, so... For anyone who didn't know, as if it wasn't obvious, I'm also the call observer on Twitter. And... Completely unbiased that... You know, because I know I could be a little bit biased on my own show, but... I honestly believe, without being biased at all, that was a five-star match. Six stars in the Tokyo Dome. Five stars here. Because we're only in the Hammerstein Bar. But... That was a good match. Elijah Riley, though, stomping out the arm and the chest a little bit there. Big running knee strike. Goes for the pin immediately. I believe it's a one count. The dominance of Dylan Vincent very much on display here. He's, a, he's not muscle, like, he's not the most muscle. He definitely isn't the biggest person on the roster for the cruiserweight division. But height-wise, he's definitely taller than most of the cruiserweights. I'd uh, almost compare his size to a Zack Sabre Jr. Because he's very lanky. To say the very least about that situation. Oh, here's the guillotine we saw earlier in that tag match. Count of one. The Northern Light Suplex by Dylan. Elijah is looking to get some offense in here, obviously. Duh. Hits that arm breaker. I'm so tired of seeing that move. Goes for the pin. Not able to get a one. Two. 
Sweep the leg. Dylan looking after the shoulder. Now he's elbowing the shoulder. Maybe hitting that corkscrew moonsault here to end the match. He's at least looking to hit it. Yes, he hits it. Go for the pin. Could that be it as quickly as it started? Two. No, it won't be it. Now he's waking him up. Looking to go Angel's wings on Elijah Riley. He's got the double hook. Lifting him up. Face buster. Dan with one, two, only a two count. Elijah able to kick out at two. Now, will this change anything here? He got the big kick out, but will Dylan change his tactics up any? But Elijah, jawbreaker. Well, sunset flip power bomb by Elijah. Not going for the pin off of that. Oh, cartwheel. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't be doing that right now. You're pretty uh, pretty useless at the moment. Uh, missing that attack. Now sends him into the corner. Saving a little bit of energy, not going for a running strike in the corner. Irish whip off the ropes. Tilt a world DDT. It probably will be Steiner screwdriver by Elijah Riley. Goes for the pin. And a rope break stopping him from possibly even getting a one count. Now lifting him up to his feet. Needs to hit the Michinoku driver, which he does. One, two, only a two count. Elijah Riley has not had anyone kick out of that before, I believe. That's a first time kick out from the Michinoku driver, if I remember correctly. Double, well not a double, but a big knee to the face. Strikes on the outside. He knows that Elijah can't win on the outside, so he's trying to keep him there. Knee to the face. Big drop kick. Really? I would have thought maybe at least like fucking Seth Rollins did. Count of five. Elijah stuck in the barricade. No, run throws him into the ring. Dylan getting in the ring, not allowing a, a count out for either man here. Oh, Steiner screwdriver again. Go for the pin. One, two, three. Dylan Vincent, no longer your cruiserweight champion. Elijah Riley picking up the win, getting his first ever title in VPW. I'm not even going to waste another page on Elijah Riley. I'm just going to put him on the Dylan Vincent page. Uh, no. So I have very high hopes for Jacob Wells. <laughs> Did I already make a page for him? I might have already made a page for Elijah. I don't remember. No, I don't think I did. So. Here is your winner and new cruiserweight champion. No, I didn't Showtime, know. Elijah Riley. Congratulations, Elijah Riley.
Yeah, none of the champions so far have been successful in their defenses. Will that change in our main event? As Morgan Wolf gets his title shot that he earned in the King of the World tournament as he defeated Brandon Alexander in that main event of that tournament. Justice Stone, fresh off of an injury, he's back for the first time in quite some time, looking to get his rematch cashed in here. He wants to take the title back from Wells. He wants to pick up right where he left off. 76 days in, he was wanting, he wants to continue his reign. I mean, it won't actually continue, but you know what I mean when I say that. He wants to continue the dominance of the VPW roster. And like he said, he wants to bring VPW back to the Stone Age. Uh, Dan, you're going to have to watch this one all the way through. You're really going to have to watch this one all the way through if you don't already have spoilers. There's, a, in my personal opinion, some five-star classic matches on this card. Now, whether or not that's an actual thing, that's up to other people. I'm a little bit biased of my own show. But I do think that tag team match is worth a watch, if anything. Now, because Dan, I want Dan to watch them. I want Dan to actually watch his match that he had earlier. Um, I won't be spoiling because, you know, I just won't speak about that match. Or I'll try not to speak about that match. I should say because I'm, I'm known to throw every spoiler out there when I'm talking about a show. Now Morgan Wolf as that's not Morgan Wolf. I saw the wolf and thought it was immediately Morgan Wolf. Wow. Justice Stone. Sorry. From Manchester, England. Weighing in at 231 pounds, Justice Stone. Against way to the ring former Intercontinental Champ, longest reigning world champ. Looking to get the title for a second time here tonight. But the difference between being champ and defending it and the difference between winning it are very obvious as winning the title is easier than keeping it as Justice Stone should already know by now. As he... Uh, very easily won his first ever VPW title in a triple threat against Jacob Wells and Ryan Rose, I believe. Oh. Well, your match was a triple threat, so technically I didn't spoil anything. Oh, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. There's Morgan Wolf, as I was trying to say when I thought it was him entering first. And introducing won this opportunity the in the King of the World tournament. From London, England. And uh, in at he was gonna probably he was gonna get the title shot on 2K20. But there's been there's it okay, 2K19 is right now the best option for VPW. Because you have this, uh, you have your sixth sense. You know, you have sound. Like, all your senses, you have sound, taste, sight, all that stuff. And then your sixth sen uh, sense is wells. But Morgan looks to uh, claim the title. Mark his territory, if you will. Which I really hope he doesn't do that because it's kind of weird. Now, I guess in a way you could say he's taunting the crowd right now. Wearing the gear that still shows the British Invasion label. Though he's that stable is no longer a thing. He is still showing a little bit of... of 
animosity, if you will, showing a little bit of a glimmer of what people had right in front of them, and it was all taken away. Oh, every single title has been on the line so far, except for the Open Challenge Championship, which either way, Ashley Rain won, so... Dan Masters actually uh, beat Morgan Wolf at Endgame, Ring the Bell Wrestling. Go follow him if you haven't. Um, and it earned them a five-star rating. Great storytelling from the both of them. But Jacob Wells has this championship around his waist. He's held it for a decent number of days. I'm actually going to probably have to figure out when he won the title. To be honest with you. Because I know it wasn't on a pay-per-view. It's just a random show, I think. Jacob Wells won the WWE. Won, <laughs> Jacob Wells won the championship for VPW on August 30th. So he's held the title since August 30th. Will he be able to keep it longer than that? Not my finest hour. This could be, it very well could be, or it could be the quickest triple threat you've ever seen in your life. That's the change, the things we can have here. Morgan and Justice immediately going after each other. Morgan needs to take out just, oh my God. Morgan's taking out both men here. Stone and Wells may have to work together. Though they hate each other, they may have to work together here to take out Morgan. Oh, Stone throwing the first hit onto Wells and it may have cost that partnership a little bit early to crack from it pressure. Oh! Stone sent over the ropes. Oh my god, a spear on the ref! Morgan Wolf has no idea what the fuck he's doing, but he knows who to hit and where to hit him, apparently. Morgan Wolf is absolutely dominating so far. Stone the oh big clothesline to the back of the head. Wells though, chop to the chest. Another chop. Stone chopping him back. Oh, slapping him in the face. Big drop kick. Yes, F in the chat to pay respects to the ref who got speared. Missing that double stomp there. Oh, sweep the legs there. Morgan Wolf, as we've seen. Time and time again, in singles com competition, he is beyond dominant in VPW. Sweep the leg, though. Reversal by Morgan again. Sleeper, slam. Morgan gets caught with a clothesline. Wells keeping on Morgan. Probably knows that he doesn't have the option to reverse right now. He's a little bit disoriented. Big sent on by Wells. Now going after Stone, completely whiffing it. German suplex. Yeah. Now, 
Wells grabbing him by the back of the head, setting him on the ropes. Sling and shot him off. Wells is trying to change up his strategy as he gets the leg sweep hit on him. But a jawbreaker from Wells. Drop kick by Wells now. Stone catches him with a side toe suplex. Dropping him on his neck there. Now dragging him away from the ropes. Looking for the pin. One. Wells not phased by the kick to the back. Emerald flows it. Lifting him back up to his feet immediately. Wells goes for the grapple, but Morgan Wolf. Oh, Morgan just saved him from the black mass. Oh, double foot stomp out of midair. Morgan goes for a strike, but not able to get over the body of Stone there. That was actually a pretty sick spot, the double foot stomp out of the midair. Now, okay, if we don't, okay, someone please clip that. Because I need to see that more. Because that's a thing you guys could do on Twitch. I need a clip of it. Stone hits the black mass. One, two, kick out at two. Morgan tried to break the pin, but was extremely late. Stone sent to the outside. Uh, the Wells went for the drop kick and missed and got double foot stomped. Ring around the Rosie, they're playing here. Big Enzo Lariat. Wells now crashing the skull. I swapped from crashing and bashing for some reason. Repeatedly smashing the head into the, into the mat there. Wells, Emerald Flosion. No, reversal by Morgan. Wells rolling out of the ring here. Very wise decision. Stone though, going to the corner, well off the ropes, big rocket kick. Now Morgan wisely getting on the apron, not wanting to stay in the ring too long with just a stone. Now onto the floor, he is sent. Wells though in the ring, Stone follows. Wells into the, sends him into the corner. Reversal by Stone. Here's that kick to the head. Okay. Wells grabbing. Arm drag. Wells lifts him up. Headlock driver. Lift him up again. Now to the knee. Morgan Wolf taking a moment to check out the, the scene, observe the situation, try to find who to attack at the right moment, taking it, going to the corner. Reversal by Morgan, dropping him on the middle rope. Now he's choking him, oh, what is he doing? Biting the wrist of Jacob Wells. Goes for the pin. One, two, only a two count. I don't know how he got a two count off of that but he did nonetheless, observing the wreckage that he has created, taking his time doing so. Stone up to his feet on the outside now. Took him so long to get back, oh! Stone not allowing even a one fall. Oh, Wolf's bite! One. Two, kick out at two. Thank you for the host, much appreciate it. Stone, big mushroom stomp. Goes for the pin. One. Wells up to his feet, Stone. And Wells double kick. Wells dragon suplex onto Morgan Wolf's head. Lifts him up, sends him into the corner. Uppercuts from Wells. Morgan Wolf waiting for his moment.
very, very much waiting for his moment here. Big drop kick by Wells. Morgan. Oh, caught him before he can go for that Emerald Plosion. What is this? Oh, reversal by Wells. Oh, Wells. Eight defeat, Dreamweaver style. Goes for the pin. One, Stone, one, two. Now waking him up. This could be the moment that Justice Stone has dreaded. Cradle pile driver. Go for the pin before Morgan Wolf gets up to his feet. One, two, kick out at two, even with the breakup. Wells fighting back, kick to the gut. Morgan Wolf reverses, kicking the leg out from under him. Goes for the pin. One, kick out at one. Stone alone in the ring with Morgan Wolf, but not without a fight. Stone with the leg sweep now goes for a pin. One, two. Kick to the back. Maximum damage. Think it. Claymore kick. No. Maybe. Possibly. Oh, Regal stretch. Regal stretch. Wells breaking it up. Oh, German suplex. Ripcord Lariat. Waking him up now. Gonna hit something big. Possibly, yes, forearm. Another one. Drop under the rules on big Pele kick. Goes for the pin. One, two, th three. That was a weak ass finish. That was a really weak finish. I'm not into that. That was a, an extremely weak finish to a decent match. Yeah, that was a horrible finish, but congratulations. Two-time champion, Justice Stone, nonetheless. The crowd is dead after that one. There you have it. That's our show. Will we probably have another show before 2K20 works? Probably. Will it be anytime soon? Probably. We'll see you next time on Velocity Pro Wrestling.